He's back, fighting, fit, look, I can do star jumps and everything. What's up, my dudes? Did you miss me? <laughs> I'm back, ready to crack on. I don't know whether cracking on is going to aggravate anything, but what the bloody hell happened, I have no idea. No answers whatsoever. Uh, I went to my GP's, well, I phoned my GP. He was quite dismissive. Uh, wasn't particularly interested. Uh, said that the things in my legs was to do with me, a, a nerve in my back, which I knew it wasn't. And I said about my heart, he was just like, uh, maybe anxiety. Wasn't particularly fast. I said, look, I don't get anxious about stuff. I'm not that type of person. Like, but he's, yeah, I pushed him and then he sent me for an ECG and a blood test. So I had my test done. I was expecting the doctor to phone me, but he didn't bother talking to me about any results. And then he went away for a week and then I had to phone him up and chase him and say, look, I was waiting for results on my thing and she then... The receptionist, mind you, said my blood tests were normal. I'm not sure she should be saying that. And um, she didn't have the ECG results there. So whilst I handed them in and they said they'd give them to the doctor, they just stuff them in a box, scan it onto the system a week later. The doctor doesn't really care and uh, they don't contact you or anything. So I had to chase them. Receptionist said my bloods were normal, even though there wasn't and my ECG wasn't on a system. So I had to book another appointment with the doctor, obviously NHS doctors. My particular surgery, you can't get an appointment for like two weeks. Um, at the time when I phoned, my chest was still hurting and she didn't really care. And so I said, well, what am I supposed to do? Go to A&E if, if like, it gets worse. And she's like, yeah. I suspect this is the reason why uh, A&Es are clogged up with loads of people because they can't go to the bloody doctors because you can't get any appointments. It's ridiculous. Maybe that's why the, what's, what's the number, 111? Is that why that was invented? And you just get a load of bods just typing it into a system and then they go, mm, yeah, you're all right. I, do you know what? I think that probably artificial intelligence would be better than a lot of these bloody doctors. It's got to be a better way. It's got to be a better way, do you not think? Anyway, uh, I ended up just booking a private GP in the end and I uh, went and see him. That I got that appointment like within a day. Uh, yeah, you have to pay a little bit of money, but bloody hell, you spent them waiting two weeks. Uh, there was a couple of um, things on my blood that were a, a bit out and uh, my ECG, whilst it said uh, abnormal ECG and uh, non-specific T-wave abnormality, he said, look, the, these, these computers, they're really, really sensitive and they pick up stuff that you wouldn't necessarily uh, take note of. He said he's not a cardiologist, but it looks okay. And if anything, my T wave is a little bit flat, he said. And he said, what maybe we should do is just, uh, I'll do your referral letter for a specialist cardiologist. It's only private. Obviously that means paying loads of money for it. But he said, look, they'll probably want to put you on a 24-hour ECG or something to see if they can catch one of these like episodes. Now, the issue with that is I hadn't really had any episodes at that point for a little bit. Um, and then that, that was kind of when I was feeling better, I would say. So I haven't chased yet. I haven't got the referral letter yet, and uh, I haven't chased it. So, a bit of rest seemed to do the job, but I'm not really sure what happened. I did notice when I went home, I had a little bit of chocolate one evening, and then my legs started tingling, and so I did at that point thinking maybe it was like diabetes or something, but my blood sugar was within normal levels. 
thinking back to recent lifestyle, I hadn't been eating particularly well. It was high carbs, high sugar, just not, not particularly healthy at all. Uh, I wasn't necessarily getting enough sleep as well. So I think it was all, all linked to, with that basically. And uh, as soon as I clocked that, I dropped all sugar and all carbs for at least like five days. And whilst I was feeling a little bit better anyway, that almost kind of fixed me. Um, and I did say that to my, the private GP and he said, no, nothing to do with that. But it was interesting. A lot of people, obviously, thanks for everyone's support and everything and well wishes. Um, Rob said, uh, stop with your builder's tea and uh, higher um, GI foods. And then I was, so that, that's, that's obviously one of the things that I've paid attention to is looking at um, the GI levels of foods. And uh, Holly and Jane as well said, check out Dr. Berg on, on the internet on YouTube. Uh, I'll take it with a pinch of salt. Now, I mean, it, it does seem quite genuine if you look up Dr. Berg, but He's a chiropractor, so mm, I don't know. I, I want to believe everything that he says, but I, like, I know I shouldn't. You, there's so much information on on YouTube that is contradictory. It's unbelievable. So I eat really bloody healthy now, no sugar whatsoever. It's just all fruit, veg, um, me. I started eating salmon as well. I didn't particularly like salmon before, but I'm now I'm eating it. I've even got some sardines that I'm going to give a crack. Um, yeah, no bread or anything like that. Since I've been doing that, I, I ate loads of nuts before anyway, but I feel better. I feel a lot better. There's a little bit of a twinge in my chest, but nothing to worry about really. I didn't do anything yesterday. Did I do anything yesterday? No, I didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of a struggle to get going again. You know what I mean? I'm just sorting this out so I can call the electrician back. These little white caps, if you um, get some frog tape, you can pull them off. Ta-da! Yeah, low GI foods. I mean, I, I used to eat like brown bread, seeded bread anyway, but not really white bread per se, but I was getting like pizza and uh, ready meals just to make it easier whilst I'm here, <coughs> uh, which obviously <coughs> isn't the best idea, <coughs> which is why I want to get the cartilage done because <coughs> it would just make it a little bit easier. But, I mean, it's not that much of an issue, just cooking anyway. Well, I'm not really cooking, I'm just eating loads of salads now. That's what's happening. Check out my brunch that I had earlier. I took a picture so you can see the kind of stuff that I'm eating. I try to avoid inflammatory food. I know I had bacon earlier, but I've got a pack of bacon. I'm not going to throw it away, I'm going to eat it. The stupid thing about it is uh, I was all but ready to like give up meat. But um, I don't think that's really happening now. I kind of went keto for a, a week and now I'm going, I don't know, I say like low carbs. I'll have a little bit of carbs like, because I couldn't, I couldn't give up all f like, Loads of fruit you can't eat on keto. I didn't want to do that. I like fruit. But yeah, sugar. It amazes me. I went shopping the other day and it's like, I t just everything, everything's got sugar in. Like you can avoid most of the supermarket. They should have 
stores that don't. I, I listened to something the other day, there's 10 food companies, no, yeah, there's 10 companies in the whole wide world that own the food industry. And they all stick sugar in everything. Bad for you, it's bad for you. I'm putting this on, because I haven't got one of them dry wall boxes. And it will satisfy the electrician. And then, as soon as he gives me my certificate, I'm going to take it back off and put it back to the other way. <laughs> oh. This is a waste of time, really. Well, I almost gave myself a shock because I come in here and can you read that? It says sockets there. I turn that one off. And I thought, oh, I should have just do all of it. And then I realised that that one there, that says first floor sockets. So I've got first floor sockets and then sockets. So I don't know which one's which, but this one's on a 32 breaker and that's on a 20. So I'm assuming the 20, that's for the uh, heating panels on the ceiling and that's for the ring. But we're not going to take a risk. I just switched them all off apart from the lights. Well, I'm just going to check just in case because I haven't, I don't know whether I've got a tester anyway. Anyway, yeah. That's not working. So I can uh, unscrew it now. So I just need to take this off, take them wires out, put it over that side, put this the other side, take this out the flexi and put the flexi into here and then put another wire going from this which will be over there back through to this side into here and it's all labeled on here so you can't really get anything wrong so yeah i mean like everything's taking forever isn't it i uh, know the the easy answer is to just employ 20 blokes just go and just do all the work and I'll just stand there and bark orders, but I mean, I just don't, I just don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Um, someone said recently about uh, getting some income to pay some people because it's a lot to deal with, but I know it's a lot. Yeah, it's a bit stressful at times. And uh, I know I can't necessarily do everything. Do you know what? It's, it's, it's not necessarily about the money. We probably could pay someone to do everything, but where's the satisfaction in that, eh? I want to stand back at the end of this and then go, right, yeah, i done pretty much all of that. It's just one of them that make me happy. And if I end up just paying loads of other people, uh, what's, what's the point? Like I might have to go and get a crappy job then, don't I? At least for this, like I can do what I want, when I want. I enjoy myself. Got myself a temp peg to pull this through. That should work, yeah. This is annoying. The plus is actually crap around this box anyway, so I might as well take it off. And then uh, it will make things a little bit easier for me. Come on. I get throw that way easy.
So this me actually a bit of wire, it's gonna go there. I'll show you how to do this quickly in one anyway. Tony taught me this. So obviously you wanna cut that, like that. This is twin and a half, 2.5. And then you wanna get the earth, which is just a bare copper wire inside. So there. And if you can grab it with these. When I hold it, hold the wire on it, and then roll it down. Like that. And then you can pull this off. And there's your wires. And you can cut that bit off. So, let's go, is that the one I just put in? Yeah. Right. Almost had it wrong. Epoxy battery went, didn't it? Anyway, I'm done. There you go. No switches. And I've been looking at this. I think I might actually bring the cabinets a little bit forward so it will be inside the cupboard. You know you have to have a little bit of a spacer at the end anyway, so that should work out all right and you can still access it from inside this cupboard. I had to shuffle around with the order what I'm actually going to do these cupboards in. It's just going to be a bank across here. If I bring it out when I do my splashback as well, the tiles that I'm using, I've got enough for the ones from the shower to use in here as well. It should work out nice. So I've texted the electrician, I've said light pop over whenever you're ready. I'm finally back on site. Um, so yeah, that's that bit done. Uh, I'll be painting soon. Uh, tomorrow I'm gonna to sort out the door because it's still binding on the bottom. I'm gonna cut off a big chunk and put a storm guard underneath, like a threshold thing. Um, I need to put the weather bar on as well, but I can't find where that is. Obviously it's dark out, I don't know where anything is. Uh, I've borrowed the airless sprayer. I've never used one of them before. This is a Graco Classic 390 PC. And this is Lou's brothers. And he's also given me the Ultra because it wasn't working. He said, have a go at it, see if you can fix it. Um, I'd say I just took it apart. One of the um, seals on the piston was popped out. So I've popped it back in, but I lubed it up at the same time. Them seals go on, they're not serviceable you have to buy a brand new pump uh, but if you look on the internet they're about 200 pounds on a lot of sites but i found it for 150 so that might be the fix for that but we'll try with what i've done so far so yeah i'll be painting soon i've got some special paint for in the shower room which i'll show you later what else what what, what news what news the roof on the main house slash barn. Uh, I've had a settlement on that now, uh, but I can't tell you how much it was or anything because uh, I'd sign a non-disclosure agreement, NDA. But yeah, I've done well. Done well. <laughs> I'd, I'll just live with the different color sheets. It's just one of the things you won't even only you and I know. No one else will ever see it. But So yeah, I can crack on with that. I've got the insulation coming soon. Uh, I just need to let Travis per Perkins know to drop it off because they, they was going to drop it off a couple of weeks ago, but I wasn't here. Uh, what else? Should I just tell you a little bit about the floor, what's happening? 
Right, so when I put the floor in, obviously there was no roof or anything, was there? I'll drop a clip in of when we built, when I built the frame. Now the uh, the tire beams. Do you remember? Like, if, did you ever was you watching then? Because they they was crowned. Do you remember that? And I pulled one down a little bit, and I thought it was kind of okay. But what's happened is there's one here. There's a tire beam. And then there's a tire beam here as well. Because the tire beams run that way, the joists run that way, uh, meaning the flooring runs this way. So they're 600 by 2.4. And it just so happens that one of the joins goes here, which is pretty much above the tire beam. Now the issue with that is one, it's crowned. So it's worse in the middle than it is either end. And two, where I've used the joist hangers and I've tabbed them over the top and put nails in, I thought oh, it won't really matter because it's only like two mil, three mil possibly. Um, but what's happened is the joists, they've kind of like sagged in their joist hangers ever so slightly. And then that has meant that the transition between that and the tire beam that's crowned plus the tab plus the nails means that there's a ridge across the floor there. So that's that's no good. Um, I wish I would have realized before I would have pulled it down a little bit more. You can tab over and let the tabs in on the joist hangers. I've seen Robert, Robin Clevett do that. Maybe I should have done that, but um, yeah, it's just, it's just a, I've, I've done it now and I, I can't undo it. That was like a year ago. <laughs> so it's pivot in here. That's where the ridge is. Now, the flooring that I've got is luxury vinyl flooring. And um, you can only have a three millimeter uh, deviation over a meter. Now, if I obviously done that, that's like almost 20 mil by the time you get to that side, that gap under there. I could have potentially sorted that out when I was actually laying the floor. I did put a little bit of packing underneath. But bearing in mind from that section, almost two thirds of the way across, I done by myself. It was in the middle of the winter. It was raining. I was just like bashing it out. So maybe th this, this is one of them things. If you don't think ahead, by 50 steps, it has a knock-on effect. So if someone else would have built this, I would have been really pissed off, really pissed off that I paid them and they've not done it properly. I don't mind that I've kind of done a little bit of a mistake because I'll be fixing it and I haven't paid anyone as well. So that, that's another reason as well that I don't like employing people and getting trades in because if I end up fixing something that they're fucked up and I've paid them, that's 10 times worse than me bodging saying up and then correcting my own mishap. <laughs> so yeah, I had to come up with a plan and I was, I need to order a load of plier for downstairs under the ceiling. Um, I was gonna pack it out with some plier. I can't put, um, latex on this flooring so that that's no good um i was going to pack it out with maybe the plier and a load of glue potentially i don't know i've got left over like cement board i've got like tar backer board six mil there it's 12 mil there i was going to maybe put that down then put a little bit of tile adhesive or latex just to feather it out a little bit um but yeah Bit of a nightmare. What what would you do in this situation? Let me know. I have found a solution. I have found a solution, but I'll tell you what the solution is when I actually actually do the flooring. So I think I'm gonna make a list about what I need to do because it's easier. I think that's probably one of the most important things to do. I know I should do it, I've never done it, but I should. if I write a list, then I can tick off what I need to do. If I decide I'm going to do something in my head and then I can't do it for whatever reason, then 
it messes me up and I can't do the next thing. But maybe if I write it down, I'll just be able to skip it and just move along. First things first, I need to sort that bloody door out. I can't keep on like kicking it to open it. It's going to end up shattering the door or something. So I need to sort that out. Then what I think I'll do is I'll sort the floor out, get that done so I can tidy up and then I'll hoover everything. I'll give this a light sand. Then I'm, uh, I'm getting a new tip for the sprayer. I'm going to spray everything. Uh, I might do the shower room just on a roller because it's only small. And then I'll come back in here and I'll do the final coat in here. Uh, I'm going to back roll it after I spray it as well. Then I'll do the tiling and then I can do the flooring properly, finish the flooring off. And then I'm like skirting and stuff. Oh, I need to build a little stud wall there for the cabinets. Yeah, I'll do that. Then I'll do the finish the flooring off. Then I can fit the bathroom. Then I build the bed. Then I can sleep in here. Then I'll build the kitchen. I'll have somewhere to shower. I need to sort out the rest of the drainage outside so I can have a toilet in here as well. And then this, and then this, and then this, and then that, and then there, and then a hundred other million bloody things. <laughs> I was watching the, the Handyman Business Channel the other day and he said, um, I mean, as long as you're intelligent, domestic work, anyone could do it. So that's pretty much, I mean, I, I know I can do everything. So do you think that's wrong? Do you think it is a bit of a kick in the bollocks when people on Instagram, like they might have started at the same time as me and then uh, they'll, they'll like, like, you know, they will finish now. <laughs> She's like, God. Uh, I think yeah, that's the saying. Is it Theodore Roosevelt? Um, comparison is the thief of all joy. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to edit this tonight. I'll get it out tomorrow for you. And then I'll catch you next week. I'm going to aim for Tuesdays. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.